Some time ago I did a video about if you could edit raw images on a Chromebook and now I'm doing a video about if you can edit video on a Chromebook. So I headed over to Google Play Store and I downloaded video editing apps and I tried a few of them but by far the best was PowerDirector by Cyberlink. So how well does a Chromebook edit video with PowerDirector? Well it does it surprisingly well. To test this out I edited a video completely with PowerDirector on the Chromebook and I released it to YouTube. So let's look at me editing on a Chromebook right now. So now we're in PowerDirector on the Chromebook. If you have this on Android, then it probably looks fairly similar on your phone. You've got this notifications over here, which isn't really that useful. I would never touch that. So you can create a new project here. And if you create a new project, what's really good is you can do it in 16 to nine or nine to 16. So you can have vertical or landscape, but I've already created this and I'm actually gonna do this video within PowerDirector. So I'm gonna edit this. And here we have our sort of screen and it's really quite good in a Chromebook. It's quite big and we get, it's just nice to use really. So I'm gonna import some media this is some of the footage that I used for my last video, which was reviewing the LG one for the Olympus TG five. So I can play it here and it plays full screen. And again, that's quite useful on, I'm going to stop that. That's quite useful with a big screen like you get for a Chromebook. And if you want to insert it, you just have to do that and it puts it in. One thing that's a problem though, for, for my type of videos is I do a lot of talking and I want to see where I, I am talking. Well, I can't here because there's no sort of visual cues. Let's put it in again and I can drag it down to one of the sound channels. And this is one of the problems with it. I can't make the timeline any smaller at all. I can't zoom in or zoom out. On a Android phone, which it's designed for, you can pinch to zoom. Well, that's great, but I can't pinch to zoom on the touchpad. The pinching to zoom on the touchpad doesn't work, and I don't have a touch screen. So that is one of the main disadvantages. So I've got to sort of click, hold, and then drag it into place, which I've done. So now I can see where to do my cuts. So I use two fingers on the touchpad to move along like that, like this, and, and that's okay, that's not a problem. And then when I wanna do some cutting, I select the clip as I would on the smartphone, and I go over here to blade. There's no keyboard shortcuts with this because, well, it hasn't been designed with a keyboard in mind, it's been designed with touch in mind. So every time, if I wanna get rid of something, I've got to click on it to select it, and then go and click to do an action. So again, click. I'm just gonna break it up into two small clips. I don't need all the clips really. So select this and I'm going to delete it. Now, if I wanna lengthen this, I can drag it out, select that, and let's bin that off. So I can quite easily cut my clips up that's really easy i've also found that most media works in here this video is in a quick time format and was taken on my canon 550d camera and it's a bit slow to respond but then i get that on a desktop even using professional video editing software and i would get around that by transcoding it so the fact that it even plays on a chromebook is good and it plays back sufficiently well i wouldn't want to edit an hour's footage on here with this video file or codec. So other things I can do, I can add in some effects and there's all these effects here. So let's just drop in a Gaussian blur. Let's drag it down to here. Oh no, we have to click to add it. And then let's go back. So I've now got Gaussian blur and that's worked quite well. It's changed the intensity of it. You click on the edit icon and then you can really change the intensity on the values. So I'm gonna click back on here. So I can edit the volume. 
and you'll notice there's audio mixing which i think is really good so if i have sounds on this on this one but i want to mix it in with the sound from my video files i can do that here which is really good and you can access this through this menu as well audio mixing i can speed up or speed down i can crop i can rotate i can flip i can duplicate and duplicating is quite good because it will make exactly the same clip again and just put it next to it so i can duplicate that's really useful so i'm going to get rid of that even though i duplicated it so click into select move the timeline here click in probably the most useful is going to be things like color so here i can pick filters if i want to here are brightness contrast and saturation levels we're not going to get huge video editing like shadows and gamma points and, and things like that but i can at least save a clip if i need to or adjust it if i need to so i can put it in black and white that's probably the best black and white i'm going to get let's make it a bit brighter there we are and i can do things like white balance and color temperature so i'm just let's put that saturation back up to here so i can adjust white balance i can't do um, drop picker and match to a certain color but if i'm putting on a white balance card i can at least do some fine adjustments with white balance if i need to so i can do my basic editing and stuff in this program quite well another thing i like is if i go back one step i can add in title that overlays or goes at the front i can add an image and i can add in video so let's say i want to put a title right at the front i'm going to add in a title there are a variety of things i can pick from but let's go for the default there we are okay so click in there right so this is where a chromebook has a certain advantage over a tablet or a phone because you've got a keyboard um video editing with a chromebook don't do anything fancy i can edit color and things like that and size but i'm not going to so I'm going to get, I can see it's too big. So what I'm going to do is I'll put a return in there. So sorry about that. My um, screen recording timed out. So what we can do, we can either have the video clip overlay over our sort of video, or we can have a more standard and conventional title. And the way to do that is to add in more media. So we need to add in color board. So let's add in a black color board. Let's put it right at the end, not where we want it. So let's move it right down to the front. Here we go. So now I can get these to match up. Again, moving is a bit fiddly because I can't pinch the zoom. It's quite difficult to match it up. But now I've got a title just on black. So I can do my titles overlaying over the video or I can do it on black, whatever's fine. And probably the last thing of interest is not only can I add in um, videos and images and colors, but I can add in music. And it's really quite useful to add in music. And I can do voiceover, which is really important for the videos I do and I can add in sound clips. So not too much in the in the way of sound clips that I probably look at, but it is quite nice to have some music. So you've got some background music that comes with the program. Um, it's classified into genres and you've got some already and you can download more if you want. So you can listen to them. It's got the duration and you can add them in and then you can tweak the volume using the audio mixer to get the right sort of balance. So all in all, I think it is a good program and certainly it does enable video editing to be done on the Chromebook. And what I like as well is that it doesn't take long to produce a video. So if we leave this now, we can go to, I'm gonna go back in, we can produce the video from here. Or I'm gonna do it from within 
within the project. So I'll click save just to save it. And then I can do all these sort of things. What I, what I quite like that I haven't tried is you can send it off to Cyberlink Cloud. So I have Cyberlink on uh, my desktop PC. So that might be really useful to upload it there and then continue working it on the PC. So what I can do, I can just output it in full HD, HD. I'm not sure what the difference here is or SD. I can set my settings. So I'm obviously going to put it on the best standard. Frame rate, can't do 25, which is annoying because sometimes I do do 25. But 30, 60, and 24 are fine. I'm not going to cry about that. Click OK, and it runs. And it won't take long to output that. It's quite quick to output it. Some of the downsides and some of the problems are your produced videos you can only seem to access through this app so it's not it goes on your local storage and your videos in your chromebook but it can be quite fiddly getting rid of them or moving them uh, etc I, I found it's also quite a bit buggy but other than that it's quite it, it's really quite a good program so let me know what you think would you, would you use a chromebook to edit video